headbutts Mr. Shim. Mr. Shim tells him that Mr. Choi hanged himself, which doesn't seem right according to that man. He rummages through the room and finds a flight ticket to the USA, the country where his son's family lives. The son sends him the ticket so they can meet for the first time in 20 years, so that man believes that Mr. Choi will not kill himself. It is a murder case. Mr. Shim still is not convinced by it. At night, Kim just gets home from her work. She sees her friend passed out in the toilet, possibly from drinking too much. She tries to talk to her, but she doesn't respond. When Kim tries to move her, she sees a pool of blood under her dead friend. Shocked by it, she slowly backs away and reaches for her phone. But the killer is still hiding in the room and gets her. Mr. Shim's room is right below Kim's room, so he hears the commotion from his bed but ignores it then goes back to sleep. In the morning, Mr. Shim goes to Ms. Min's shop to have breakfast. He meets with the eccentric man again. It turns out that his name is Park, an ex-detective who is also Mr. Choi's ex-partner. As they have their breakfast, they continue to discuss the current situation resembling the unsolved case 30 years ago. Three elderly men have been found dead so far. If it's the same perpetrator, the next victim would be a young woman. Park asks Mr. Shim if he knows a possible victim. He remembers a strange sound from Kim's room last night but keeps quiet about it since he is unsure. Mr. Shin then leaves Park and quickly goes to room 205 to check on Kim. Once he gets to the apartment building, he sees a suspicious man trying to get into Kim's room. The suspicious man runs away, so Mr. Shin chases him on his trusty scooter but is forced to run and quit later. Unfortunately, the suspicious man manages to strike Mr. Shin with a wooden stick, making him unconscious.